What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to working on the rally car on the channel right now. So, we have installed the new fuel pump. We have installed the fuel filter at the back. Had to use a little uh, like adapter to go from the half inch GSLE feed line to the 3 8 that now is going to be the rest of the system. Uh, it's a Carter 4600. We've got the Weber IDA installed, which we did in the last video. I've got the throttle cable kind of rigged up for now. I'm waiting on uh, the bell crank from Racing Beat to come in or from Mazda Tricks. It didn't come with my previous order, so hopefully it shows up or I got to call them or whatever. But um, I need the bell crank. I just made a little bracket for now so I can at least hit the throttle in there. I was getting ready to come in here and change these jets, and this K&N filter plate actually prevents you from getting the idle jets out. So, not that you're going to be tuning your car all the time, but I hate things that impede serviceability. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull this plate back off and I'm going to cut it so that you can get the jets out without having to take the filter plate off. Because those four screws that hold the trumpets and everything in are kind of a pain to put in there. Um, and you'd hate to drop one of those down into your engine. So, I want to make sure that you can get the jets off easy peasy. The fuel system, I don't know on my previous car, um, the 99 car with the DCOE, I thought I had a return line hooked up, but I don't, or didn't. I had a return line hooked up before, I know, but when I switched to use this uh, inline pressure regulator, I ended up not needing one, so I didn't have one. So on this car, I don't have a return line hooked up now, but I don't know if it's going to stay that way. So... That might change in this video as well, but I figured I would mention it. This is literally just the universal throttle cable from Mr. Gasket. You can use a 12A throttle cable on this. It will be long enough, um, but they're the same price, and this one gives me a lot more flexibility with how the end of it mounts. The 12A cable is going to have a ball, a lead ball on the end of it, like this, and then you're pretty much stuck with, you have to cut it or do whatever to make it fit with something else, so... I went with the universal one. It comes with all that stuff. I drilled and tapped the Racing Beat lower intake manifold for a barb fitting so that we can hook up the brake booster. I don't know why it didn't come without a port on it anyways. My Holly manifold has that. My other Racing Beat manifolds have those on them already. I don't know why that one didn't have that, but whatever. It does now. And uh, we did do the Dash 6 conversion here, which is really the only Dash 6 fitting on here. Because, you know, this uses just regular barbs, which I could put uh, eighth NPT to dash six on, on that thing, but not really worth it. It's not about making it the fanciest. What it is about is making it serviceable. You need to be able to, when you're racing the car, you're at a rally, you're at this, whatever, you're going to break it. You need to be able to fix it with stuff you have on hand. And if you're able to afford a whole other fuel system, exactly how you set it up, that's awesome. But... Um, this at least, you can go to O'Reilly's, get hose clamps, get new fuel line, get whatever. Makes it easy. The pump looks really good under there. So I already pressurized this and put fuel to the um, that line. I didn't put fuel to the carburetor yet. Now that I'm going to change these jets really quick, we're going to do that. Um, I've got to pull this whole plate back off. And then I'll change the jets, which I should have done it before. But I'm glad I didn't because now I'm going to cut the plate. And then uh, the car's pretty much ready to try to start. Um, I did do away with, uh, I had a line recirculating coolant from the top of the thermostat to the back of the engine. Um, so there's a coolant port down here. This is a Series 4 six-port engine, um, the block. Uh, when I rebuilt it, I didn't plug that port. I really don't like drilling and tapping that um, rear port for a plug when the engine's together. So we're going to leave it, but um, I've capped it. I need to get a 3 8 NPT because this has been tapped for uh, standard size. So, so we're out on rally car, guys. I'm really not too stoked, and we'll crawl under here and look at this. Um, but I'm really not too stoked with the like where the Carter pumps tend to like to sit. Um, I've seen people mount them like right up in here, you know, on that flat plate. But then your bolt heads come through the floor behind the seat, which is not a huge deal. But I prefer to mount it to the frame rail, which is something solid. So this is in here good, soft mounted. The wires are here. 
you know, these will get zip tied up, but the factory fuel pump cover doesn't really cover this at all. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, uh, effectively like a skid plate just out of some sheet metal to cover that pump. Um, just to keep the dirt and the rocks and stuff from hitting it. Um, if, you know, you board slide this thing on a ditch, yeah, you might tear it up. Um, the suspension's not going to hit any of it. But I would just rather keep dirt and debris out of the pump. I think, you know, if you're building a road race car, right, with a Weber IDA, and you're going to drive on a track, and, I mean, the likelihood of, you know, just crap getting up in there is pretty low on a, on a paved track. But with Rally, the dirt dirt gets everywhere. And rocks get everywhere. So we want to keep those out. But that's where we're at now. So I'm going to go ahead. We'll pop this off. We'll change that. And we're going to get this thing fired up here shortly. And I'm fired up to fire this up. So it would be dope to hear it run with the, with the Weber. And I don't have, like I said, I don't have everything here. But we're getting really close. Hopefully stuff starts showing up. So... <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt you in the middle of this video with bad audio quality and horrible lighting because I finally got the bell cranking, okay, to work on the rally car. This video has been over the course of a couple weeks, all right? We've been accumulating parts to get this thing running, and this, Race and Beat, Mazda Tricks, um, is a Race and Beat product I think Mazda Tricks sells. Anyways, it's for a, a rotary adaptation of a Weber carburetor because we mount them effectively backwards. So what mean what that means is the direction of the throttle blade twist, you can't pull across the top, right? You have to pull across the bottom with how the car is oriented on the engine per se. Okay, so we're looking at the carburetor as you want to pull a throttle cable towards you. Right? In the standard Weber, it goes away from you. Alright? Now, they sell this crank to flip that. Well look at this. If I put this on Okay, fits right here. Look at that, no dees. It has to go the wrong way, right? It's gonna to wanna to twist this way. Can't really like, I can set this flat. So this thing wants to twist this way, right? That's away from us right now, okay? No dees. We wanna put it on, you know, they go on 180 degrees like this, right? The other way, okay? So it's not hitting anything. Look at that, we can pull it towards us, but hey look, the bell's going the wrong way, okay? But, See how that little S is in there? The way it needs to go on, which is this way, okay, right here, just like that, that piece, pull the thing, you hit the hammer down, goes like this, and look, it runs into everything. You can't, it's like, it's not even close. And if I space it out with like, say, a bunch of washers, right, it won't fit. So, you wanna know what we're gonna do? We just bought this thing, very fresh, very new, zinc plated awesomeness. And I'm going to go smash it with a hammer, so that way that that S is flat, and then it'll fit on here perfectly. Gotta love when new parts don't work the way they're supposed to. Perfect. Come back over to our carburetor, and you can see the direction that this needs to go, right there. Boom diggity, and we got full action they literally made extra work for themselves by bending that extra work cost them extra money they could be making more money off these they just left them straight all right guys this is the moment that we have all been waiting for the time we try to start the rally car with its fresh Weber 48 IDA. Currently, I don't have the fuel pump hooked up, so we're just gonna see if it lights off, and then we'll try to hook the fuel pump up and uh, warm it up, weed the coolant back out. Um, I've moved, removed one of the coolant crossovers that was connected to the upper intake manifold and just blocked off both the ports. So we're currently running like true old school 13B stuff without the, the thermal wax. We do have the throttle cable hooked up. I did prime the pump, so it does have fuel in it. I've just been take this little wire right here, ground this guy out. 
you hear the pump running. So, and if you guys are stoked as I am, the last thing we're going to have to do after this is build a little uh, shield for the pump. But, we get this thing running tonight, I'm stoked. It'd be awesome to get a video up for you guys. So, ignition stuff hasn't changed. These cars are just the same as a carbureted car when it comes to the ignition side. So it's not exactly the most happy, but hey, it started. How about that? Didn't sound like we were going to have any exhaust leaks. Did sound like we're probably going to have to open the idle up. Um, I set the mixture screws at, I think, two turns out. It didn't look like this was getting stuck on anything. But I don't have a return spring on the throttle cable yet, so maybe I'll make one of those. Um, we just pumped it, so it should have some more fuel. Let me throw a return spring on, and then we'll hit it again, just so it doesn't, like, get stuck. Okay, return spring is on, and we're going to dig through my toolbox for, like, 16 years. Okay, I'm going to set the idle another half a turn higher. I'm going to back the air mixture screws out. Another half a turn, so we're at two and a half turns out on each one. This carburetor also doesn't have, since it's not a rotary modified Weber, it doesn't have a third progression hole drilled. Um, some of the other people that I've seen that run these, Josh's doesn't have a third progression hole either, so we're going to try it without it. If we got to drill it, we'll drill it. Let's put some more fuel in it. Should be good. Main power still on. I've been pumping the throttle a little bit, so it should just fire right up. Woo was probably loud. I'm gonna have to edit that down because I didn't put my microphone on. But hey, guess what, guys? We've got an RX7 rally car with a Weber that runs. And my gasket's a little soaked. Did it dump a bunch of fuel out? This gasket's wet. See that? Shouldn't be having much of that, so we're going to tighten that down. So these are thicker gaskets, and I don't have those, uh, the little O-ring deals on these, just the, which I may have to get a set of those for a 48. i got to find them first for a 48, though. But, uh... Hey guys, it runs. Okay. I'm not going to run it for that long. I got the shop heated and I really don't want to open it up tonight. But get stoked for this thing firing up. I have a couple little things that I need to dial in before it's like ready to rock and roll. Okay. So I'm planning on, I have a sheet of Lexan here. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in the video or not, but. I have a sheet of Lexan here, and I want to make a clear top for the filter cover. Um, I know the K&N one's chrome, and it looks cool, and chrome gets you home, and all this other stuff that all the hot rod guys say, but here's the back of it, which I taped it over so it's clean. I'll include it, you know, with whoever gets the car, but I don't want it. I'd rather make a, uh, a clear one, because I really want to be able to see the stacks, so your view will be like this, right? You'll be able to see the clear stacks in there. So I'll be fired up to get that made. I'm just going to cut it out on a jigsaw, buff it, and it'll be a million bucks. It's got one hole in the middle of it for a screw. You know, it doesn't need to have any sort of crazy stuff on it. This has like a little, as I throw it, 
raised edge around it, which that one won't, but it'll just clamp it down. It'll be just fine. Um, we are using, and this might be my fuel leakage coming out the bottom here issue. Um, I do just have the Mr. Gasket inline regulator running in line. Now, when you look at how people with Volkswagens and stuff set these carbs up, uh, they don't run a return fuel line. I'm most likely going to have to run a return. Who's fired up? I don't know where the camera shut off because I ran out of space on the SD card. But anyways, I think I was talking about needing to run a return line. So most likely we're probably going to install a return line. I need to grab um, the little hack is to get a male or a female to male inspection port AN fitting. You can get the one that has the little like nipple on it and then you can put a gauge in that. So I need to get a fuel pressure gauge on here real quick make sure that the fuel pressure is good typically on the other card like i said didn't have issues with this being set at three um but i don't know if i like just had a bunch of fuel in there because i was pumping the accelerator or if i had a bunch of fuel in there because the fuel pump when i had it on just dumped a bunch of fuel so we gotta check a few things this that and the other that'll be in the next video i'm also going to build a shield for the fuel pump which i already mentioned i think i've got to bleed the coolant system yet and fix that brake line in the back and then figure out wiring for the fuel pump so for those of you who don't know a little quick thing before i close the video out in most most racing applications okay most sanctioning bodies most techs so like tech inspection when you you go to a race event are going to require or at least rally you to have your fuel pump on an engine cutoff switch. Now, I don't know if that's a technical term, but basically if your engine dies, okay, the car stalls, the fuel pump has to turn off. Reason being, if you remember Ken Block when he crashed his Cosworth, okay, the, the first one that he built, that car didn't have that switch. When he rolled it upside down, okay, engine died, cards upside down, lots of heat and stuff going on up here, that car, the fuel pump kept running, the car burned to the ground, okay? There's ways to do that really simply on these old cars. You can run like a two PSI oil pressure switch, okay? And use that switch, right? So when the engine sees oil pressure, it turns the fuel pump on, it drives a relay. You can run a fuel pump controller, which is something that's a little like computer deal. You hook it into the tax signal. As soon as it sees a tax signal, it turns the fuel pump on. When the tax signal goes away, it turns it off. I am going to wire that up on this car. I don't feel right having it hooked up, whether it's just on a switch. Um, I was hoping I could use the factory GSLSE like ECU to control that, but I think I'm just gonna remove the ECU and gut out a lot of this old wiring. So that'll get done. I'll show you guys how to do that in another video. But for now, this thing runs. I'm stoked to have a video for to upload for you guys. Work has been crazy. Just been putting in a bunch of hours up there. It's been taking a lot of time away from doing this stuff. Um, and as much as, you know, one or the other, this stuff doesn't pay me work pays me really well. So I'm going to, you know, obviously make that a priority. So the Corvette, if you are on Patreon or whatever, the Corvette is at the body shop. Um, you guys kind of knew that, I believe this is getting ready to hopefully get submitted to bring a trailer ASAP. We got a few other things to button up. Like I said, and this will go there. Little Stu, get stoked, because as soon as this thing is out of the shop, we're just going to knock this out. Little Stu's coming in the shop, because we're to the point now where I need it in the shop. It needs to be warm. I need it dry so I can do the interior stuff. So I'm stoked, stoked that you guys are here watching these videos. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know it was a while back and are gearing up for a wonderful Christmas season here. And, uh, and yeah, I'm fired up. This thing's fired up. The rally car's fired up. Get fired up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop any questions or comments below. Hop over to the Patreon if you want to see some more stuff. Or the Patreon has the Rad Solutions section. If you have problems with your car, get on Patreon. Send me the details. I can make you a video trying to help you figure out your car. So thank you guys very much for watching. Keep it rad. We got to say goodbye to the dog. Letty, come on. You were so close this time. It's like you knew. Well, what are you doing? Come here. Letty. There she is.
It's like you knew we were done. Or you're cold. Are you cold? You want to go inside? But it was cold. Peace, guys.